Hello, I'm John Queeley. Um, retired, used to ride amateur for many years, now train. train. Uh, based here in sunny south east here in Dungarvan. Um, uh, as my wife keeps reminding me, whatever about the man I did, she, she definitely found a place. <laughs> Ah, sure, I, 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 I'm on horses since I was knee-high, you know, and ponies and that. My father always kept a pointer pointer and uh, did a lot of hunting when I, in my early days, you know. Uh, horses were always my life, you know, and uh, I got about 16, then I went to um, Francis Flood, uh, up in Grange Con, and... Um, Spent a few enjoyable years there. Um, yeah, I was an amateur rider, yeah. Um, learned a lot from Francis. Um, he was a great rider himself, of course. <clears throat> Francis would have had about 25 horses. Uh, actually, Frank Berry and myself arrived the same week. And um, I'm sure the rest is history with Frank. He was a great jockey. I rode a lot of pint of pints, yeah. I was champion pint of pint rider twice, yeah. Rode a lot up the north. Went to the north, used to go to the north every Saturday. Loved that. And um, rode for everyone up there, you know. Um, and rode a lot down here, down the Cork Waterford circuit as well. The main lads would be Nicky Deeb, would be, uh, Timmy Callahan, Pat Healy. All, all good riders, you know. Tough. Wouldn't give you an inch. Stayed amateur, uh, rode a good bit for Paddy Prendergast, then I moved on to Paddy Prendergast. Had a few great years with Paddy, Paddy Jr. And uh, Mouse, rode a good bit for Mouse Mars. Um, Tommy Carberry had a few good days with Tommy. I rode for everyone and anyone. Yeah, I was lucky enough to ride a winner in Cheltenham for. Um, to win the um, Kim Muir for um, Fred Winter. Uh, that was a special day. And uh, I was lucky enough to ride a few nice winners. Won the amateur in Galway uh, for Noel Mead, uh, the amateur flat race. Uh, won the John Durkin chase for. for um, Rosemary Rooney, horse called Excursion. Yeah, I was lucky enough to ride a few nice horses. I've told this story a thousand times. Tony Mullins, good friend of mine. The two of us were riding in the Grand National. And uh, Tony's riding a horse called Duty. And uh, I'm riding a horse called Doorstep for, for Mouse. The Horgans and Corcorns, and then they're paying me by the fence. I think it's a ten or a score of fence, anyway. So I'm down to the start, anyway. And uh, Tony is riding this horse called Doody, and he's promised a new Merc if he gets round. A man in. Uh, Mercedes man in Port Arlington, can't he? Moor. So, I don't know what's this now for the camera, but anyway, we're down at the start anyway, and I says, just for something to say, Tony, I says, uh, what are you doing? Just for something to chat. And Tony looks around like that to me and says, John, to tell you the truth, I'm shitting myself. So, off we go anyway, and uh, Tony makes the running, and I'm potting the way around to the back, and uh, get to the, the ditch the second time, the third fence second time, and my old horse refused, landed me up on top of it, and who's at the back of the fence, in under the fence, only Tony. And uh, the, the uh, steward is there, the, the fence steward is there. <laughs> he says to Tony, you can come out now, there's no more horses coming. 
So we jump into the ambulance and you're not a bother on the two of us. And I said, well, Tony, how'd you get on? Well, to tell you the truth, John, he says, great. Going out in the second circuit, I was wondering what colour car I'd pick. <laughs> and that is a true story. He's the funniest man I ever met. I've told that story a thousand times. And that's word for word true. Yeah, I was champion point, point rider in 80, 80 and 81, I think. And I was champion amateur then and on the track in 86 or 87, I think, twice anyway. Um, uh, Jesus, I, um, I rode with some... That time, the main the main men would have been, bit, top amateurs would have been um, Ted, of course, Willie, Willie Mullins, Colin Magner. Uh, they were the top. They were the top boys at the time, so yeah, I thought about it, and I, if I, probably if I was to do it again, I would, you know. But I mightn't have been good enough. I mightn't have been good enough. <laughs> uh, there were some good writers around then. There was like, you know, there was Frank, Frank Berry, Tommy Carberry, and all those boys, you know. Uh, anyway, I, I, I enjoyed it. I loved all the courses, but I, I, for, like, I love Leopardstown, love Punchestown. But I, I rode a lot of winners around Bellystown. It was just a lucky course for me, you know. Uh, I used to love, love riding around there, you know. Every jockey through every year, I go back to Fred Winter, they were all great riders in their era, you know. And I think it's very unfair to compare jockeys from one era to the next era. Uh, I, Tommy Carberry, Frank Berry, great writers, you know, uh, Fred Winter, um, John Frankham, Richard Dunwoody, lovely writer. Had my share, had my share of injuries, all right, yeah. I had one bad one and that finished me. So that was, so it just turned to training then. That was a natural progression, you know. Ah, it's more difficult now, um, um, at that time, Everyone got a bit of a slice of the cake, you know. Um, whereas it's pretty much dominated now by Willie and Gordon and and um, and uh, Henry, you know. Um, but that's it. That's competition, isn't it? You know. I wouldn't be a big numbers man now. I, I like to have a fifteen plenty for me, you know. Um, I wouldn't be into numbers, you know. Mixture of everything. I have a couple, couple of my own, and um, um, I have good loyal owners, you know. They've been with me a good, good number of years, you know. He was a horse called Irish Bay. Uh, first horse I had actually. Uh, he won three bumpers for me. Uh, he won in uh, Killarney. Uh, he won in Roscommon and then he went on to Galway, he won three bumpers. And I says, Jesus, I says, and then Cock Holborn won two for me. I says, this game is easy. <laughs> I was in for a rude awakening. <laughs> and Ballyvooney won one. So I, I had tr my first three horses, they won uh, three and two, six bumpers. And I said, this game is simple. <laughs> I just got lucky, you know. Like Ballyvooney turned out to be the dam of, or the grand dam, as I told you that, of many clouds, you know. Just got lucky. I had a um, horse called Cock Coburn, one of my first horses. Uh, Donald Kinslow under him, he won. He had some good days with him, he won a couple of bumpers, won a listed hurl. Ballyvooney, she won a bump of me. Would have been the grand dam of um, many clouds, the horse that won the national. She won a bumper for me. That was back in the early days. Uh, then, of course, I had Alela. All those days in the entry were great days, you know. Um, and he, won, he won, as I said, he won the Leopardstown November handicap. I didn't, I wouldn't be training too many flat horses, you know. But he was a dual purpose horse, you know. That was a great day. Patsy Veal for Michael Ryan as well. Or Rato Gale. Yeah, she 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 won uh, she won six or seven for me, uh, 
and uh, what else did I? Yeah, a, a horse called Arcadian Sunrise, uh, who won in York for me two years ago, uh, with Jamie Spencer on board, and won a few hurdle races, and unfortunately uh, ran him in Ascot last year. He was third, a bit unlucky, came home, got a bit of travel sickness coming home, and we lost him, which, which is still a sore point, you know. He's, uh, he was he was our own, and uh, he's kind of part of the family, you know. So that was tough. That was tough, you know. Everyone has their own regime, you know. Uh, but the f- the facilities available now uh, make it a lot easier, you know. Everyone has their own gallop which back 30 years ago they wouldn't have had, you know. Uh, And if you want to use, if I want to use another gallop, I just go down the road to Coromoa for a day out or that, you know. The facilities are a lot better, you know. I go to the sales, but I I don't go to the main sale. Like, I'm inclined, I've been very lucky at the August sale in, in, uh, in Tattersalls, and I've bought some nice horses out of it over the years, you know. They've been lucky for me, that Arcadian horse I was telling you about, and uh, some more, you know. Uh, I just can't compete at that, the Derby sale, you know. Uh, a bit of everything, I, I'd i always, not too pushed about the sire, I'd always look for something in the, in the damp side, you know. And it might go back to the third generation, but I'd always, I'd always look down the damp line first, you know. Tremor was very lucky for me. Uh, but I'd say the stole is my favourite. My, it's my luckiest course. Um, I seldom leave there without a winner, you know. And I'm inclined to aim my horses there, you know. I've, I've a very, if I say so myself, I've a very, very good strike rate there. So I found I couldn't compete. I couldn't compete with with the um, go to the sales. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I found it difficult to. to to, to compete with the big boys, you know. Uh, it's a totally different, uh, it's a very, very professional now, you know, it's it's it, it's, uh, it's it's a sales game now, you know. You, you, but, just, you know, it's good, it's good, it's promoting the horse, you know, it's promoting the Irish horse, you know. He rode a few winners for me. He actually rode his first winner in Galway for me, Richard Dunwoody. Of course, there was no agents around then, you know. It was um, an October weekend, and I forget who used to be riding him. I think Brendan Sheridan used to ride him. Brendan had to be somewhere else. I think there was two meetings on. So, Jeepers, I says, I knew I had a horse. I said, I better get the best. So I looked at the English racing calendar, and I copped that there was no racing on the bank holiday Monday that October bank holiday Monday in England. And, uh, geez, I got in touch with Richard and Ian. Would he be interested in coming over? He says, fine. Uh, and at that time, you see, you, did, you didn't have to put the jockey down in the paper. You know, it could be a blank. So I decided, Jeez, if I put Don Woody down in this fella, he'd be three to one on. <laughs> and he'd be putting too much of a spotlight on me. So I left it blank anyway, next day. Arrived at the races, or Don Woody. Sure he won. But he was six to four instead of being three to one on. <laughs> Jim, Cull- Jim Cullerty rode a few winners for me. He rode my first winner in England for me. Uh, in, in, at this November meeting in Cheltenham, he, he won in Alela actually, and um, but Jim wasn't the regular rider of Alela. He couldn't. It was Timmy Murphy r- rode them all. He's big winners for me. Timmy, lovely, lovely rider. Me and Timmy, or Timmy and I, are got on well. He didn't say much, and I said less. 
she knew what I was thinking, I knew what he was thinking. Um, lovely, lovely pair of hands, you know. And he was made for that horse, Alela. You know, he'd drop him in and take his time and nurse him, you know. He was poetry in motion. I love, love, used to love watching him. I still look at the videos of him, watch him ride him, you know. And Ruby, Ruby has a hell of a strike rate for me. Didn't ride that much for me, but I'd say he rode about 16 times. Maybe about six or seven winners for me, you know. Uh, as I'd, I'd only put him up on one when I'd have one. But uh, yeah, I had plenty of luck with him. If I had the horse, if I had a good horse, I, I always tended to. The horse deserved the best. Yeah. I'm inclined to get, get, yeah. Dennis O'Regan rides a good bit for me now, but he, he suits, he suits me, you know. And suits so, certain horses, you know. I just enjoy what I'm doing. I have a nice, manageable number of horses, and with the lads getting a bit older now. <clears throat> I I've more help at home, you know. My wife Miriam looks after the the uh, secretarial end of it. She's a bit of a bean counter. Uh, and I do the the manual. <laughs> and then I have my 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 three children. Uh, Orla, she's big into the show jumping, as you know. Starting to ride in a few bumpers, but they tell me. They tell me she's not too bad at the show jumping, so she has the eye for it, so I'd be encouraging her along that route, you know. And uh, second girl then, Margaret, then she's brilliant around the yard. And the other, the young fella then, he's doing his leaving cert. Um, I'm trying to keep him going to school and keep him away from these horses, but I, I don't think I'm going to succeed. <coughs> he rides out a couple before school every, before he goes to school every morning. So it looks as though he's going down that road. I love riding out. I love riding out. They tell me I'm mad, but I, I get the buzz. I love, I love when I do find a nice horse. I, I get a great buzz out of sitting, sitting on a nice horse, you know. It's the dream. It's the dream of finding a nice horse. And I've been lucky over the years. I've had a few nice horses. I've had that. I was lucky, lucky enough to meet uh, Mick Grid. Like I mean, the racing community is a very small community, and you meet great people in it, you know. And everyone looks after each other. The wheel always turns, even when things are going bad.